Well, we have the president of the Mount Temple Métis Federation, David Chartrand, on the line. David, how are you? Uh, I'm doing okay. I'm just uh, going through a lot of my reports here, reading them, and uh, uh, just heard the president of uh, NCI speak about the losses in the Cormorant area. Uh, yes. His go out to his families, and I uh, heard Dave Allard and his loss. So, my, again, uh, my condolences. And there's a few others, of course, that uh, that uh, called in and... Uh, uh, always a tragic when you hear that uh, somebody's loved one is gone. Yes. And uh, so we have Joyce uh, Janai. Uh, also, she lost uh, Wally Janai. Wally loved music. I don't know if you remember, Ray. He sang all over the place, and uh, he's from Barrows. And so I want to give a special uh, prayer going out to Wally. He was a very good friend of mine. And uh, Joyce was sat on in the MMF at one time many, many mm-hmm. years ago. And uh, But Wally uh, actually was uh, loved his music and always try to travel to festivities all over the place to listen to music. So, And so I also want to wish to my daughter and others, uh, I'll come back. Um, I also want to say happy birthday to my mother-in-law, Janice Yakuchuk. June, June 5th is her birthday, so today, happy birthday, Janice. Oh, yeah. Uh, there was a lot of meetings taking place right this week. Uh, I had uh, quite a number of them that's going on, and uh, I heard about the flag question. I think you give them a hint about the flag. It is uh, the Battle of Seven Oaks, as it's called in government, and uh, we call it the Victory of Frog Plain, so people can get a better handle on that. Right. If you're talking about the flag that's going to be flying at City Hall, and I want to thank uh, Councillor Sean Nason, who's collaborated with the Federation, got a hold of us, and uh, we had a good discussion with him uh, regarding that. And I echo that flag should have been hanging there a long, long time ago, and I don't know why it took so long before it got there. Uh, we talk about tragedy, and uh, I just made reference to some of the stuff that we hear uh, throughout. Uh, in Duck Bay, there was a couple of tragic incidents, which I can't name names, but uh, very, very sad. Uh, two people passed away uh, in Duck Bay um, day after day, and basically, I think, two days apart, uh, very tragically. And uh, I won't speak any more of it until the family gives me the green light on it, but otherwise, my condolences go to those families. Uh, and I know they're, they're really hurting right now, and they need as much prayer as they can get their way. And also to the 215 bodies found, uh, and again, in, in British Columbia, uh, buried and hidden by the, by the school system. Uh, you know, I'm sure that uh, it is a tragedy. We'll find more and more throughout. Uh, I think it was some already in Manitoba they found, and uh, I think want to see a lot more of that uh, when they start uh, doing these uh, uh, findings with these machines to see if they can find bodies. Uh, buried uh, quietly or hidden uh, by the church, uh, you know. And, and I, I hear with uh, with pain when I listen to those individuals speak, and knowing that they know some of them that disappeared, and they just thought they ran away, right. not realizing that they were probably murdered or killed or left to die. And uh, so I use the word murdered because I'm sure that some of them were murderers in a way that mm-hmm. so many children can die, and you hide them and bury them. So. Uh, seen as less than valuable as the people and uh, was it uh, because they're afraid they're going to get charged for their uh, incidents and actions uh, or is it too costly to take the body back to the reserve where they took the, stole the body from, child from you know all of these things you know it just makes you your heart break and oh, yes. uh, it's quite sad to hear that and I, I feel for all those families and uh, I support them strongly and our prayers shall go out uh, to all those families and and the more we're going to find I want to thank Chief uh, Meaches, uh, Dennis Meaches from Long Plain. He called how all of us there doing a ceremony out in the residential school in Port La Prairie. And my minister, of course, uh, Andrew Carrier, attended on our behalf. He's the minister of residential school, uh, survivors for the Métis, and uh, he went in to give honor uh, to the children and, and also echoed the sentiments on behalf of the Métis government. I know there's a different uh, discussion taking place right now regarding renaming the Bishop Granite Boulevard. Mm-hmm. And people have asked my opinion and they see my opinion somewhat different. People say, get that name out of there. You know, and it's not deserving of any honor. And that that name should not be even attributed in any fashion to be given any credence. But my fear, and I say that the name should stay, and they should put the story behind, the true story of what these people did. Like, they shouldn't get away. In my view, if you take the name, you hide it, and it's gone, and we'd be forgotten. <clears throat> you put that name there, and you tell them what they did. You right. tell the world what these people did. Mm-hmm. Uh, Bishop, uh, I'm a strong believer in prayer. My mom was a strong Catholic. I still pray every night and every morning. When I get up, I wish my mom more, every morning a hello. And, you know, she passed on many years ago now, but I always talk to her every day. And uh, when I look at this stuff, I, 
I hate the thought of these uh, priests and others and all those that that uh, were were involved in such horrific action uh, and and uh, I'll call it murdered kind of soul of the people trying to murder us uh, in the sense of inhuman actions of these people and yet these were priests a lot of them mm-hmm. and so but they shouldn't just take the name and throw it away and hide it they should damn well tell the story of what that priest did right. you know so that uh, people can read it and and have a true perspective and a true understanding mm-hmm. people always ask the question why is indigenous people uh, some of them have such alcohol and drug problems and why do they are they economically so far behind us why are they uh, having so much social uh, problems go back in history and you'll know you know mm-hmm. check the history and you'll find out you destroy you try to take the soul from them for crying out loud you try to destroy them you try to take out the heart from them and now you're saying oh they should be okay you know that that uh, they became parents after, and they were broken. It's like when the when our when our uh, great heroes, our 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 soldiers, came home. They were broken when they got home, and nobody was there to help them. That's right. And a lot of their parents, uh, kids, I'm sorry, thought they were. Oh, why is my dad a drunk? <clears throat> your dad's a drunk because his brain was going crazy. He was hurting so bad when he seen such horrible, horrific uh, murder and you know people being shot right beside them and suffering and screaming. And they, they tell me the stories the last 20 years I've been working with these veterans. And, you know, and, and, and then you wonder why they're, they're in such despair and they're having such uh, uh, challenges uh, trying to be just normal. They can't because their, their heart is, is destroyed, their, their mind is they're, they're in a crisis, and there's no support by Canada for the Métis veterans and First Nation veterans when they came home. So this is the same thing here. I just hate the thought that they take these names put them away, and then in 25 years we'll never even know what the hell Bishop Brandon was. They still don't even know what the hell he is anyway today. Yes, right. But they should put the damn history, what he did mm-hmm. in Manitoba. Don't just hide them. You know, tell the story and then not, let's not let this country get away with it, nor nor let the church get away with it. There's there's definitely good priests out there. We know that. But there's these priests that, that played such a, a horrific role in trying to destroy the very soul of indigenous people. So I think it's important that that story be told and that story be reminded over and over and over and understood in this country and the world that what indigenous people went through was an attempt of genocide. That, and sometimes it's, you still think it's happening today. And, but the suffering and the hardship that happens today is because of all this. So if you just throw it away 25 years from now, you won't even, people will forget all about it. Just like the, you know, look, you talk with Dennis Meaches and uh, or Brandon, that residential school. Uh, you know, they rip it down if it's gone, and people forget all about it. But now you can go searching around there. There's probably bodies hidden all over the place there from children. So same thing with the, uh, I was really proud of that chief from BC who said, you know, I don't want a resident school broken down. I want that thing to stay. I want a reminder to this country and to the world that to what they did to our people. So I don't want that building ripped down because people will forget 25, 50 years from now. So we can never let people forget what they tried to do uh, and the horrific action of, the, of a government, of a church, and all those involved in trying to steal the soul of our children and, and, and the culture of our people. So that's why I fight hard, the opposite of others, and people say get rid of it. It's an insult. Yes, it's a damn well insult. But put that damn story behind it and we'll see how much of an insult it is to the other side when they start reading what they try to do to us and still uh, affect us today. So anyways, I want to speak on that a little bit because it, people, uh, I don't want people to say, what the hell is wrong with Chartrand? You know, I want that person to pay a price like we paid a price and like all families paid a price, all mm-hmm. those that suffer still today because of them. I want that story to be told and never be forgotten in this country. So anyways, uh, for that purpose, uh, it's no different than why I want that flag raised in City Hall. It should have been there a long, long time ago. I don't know at times I spoke to mayors and others trying to get that flag there on November uh, 16th or on May 12th when Manitoba became a part a province and federation because of the Métis Nation. So when you look at it, uh, there's my dogs now. Somebody is outside, you know. Yeah. So anyways, I heard about the vaccine clinics, and I was very pleased, uh, again, with the federation. I want to thank all the staff working on that. Uh, we have Pfizer's now. We're, we're giving our shots there now to our citizens. It's running smoothly, and I want people to come and get your shot. Uh, yeah, take care and uh, be 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 brave in some sense. People don't listen to that that garbage in, in Facebook. I'm telling you from I'm telling you I did my research on this uh, because I have to as a president, and that we got the best experts in the world that are telling us. If you look at the news and others, 
that this vac- this new vaccine even coming is called Delta now out of India. It's starting to spread in Ontario. I uh, didn't mention the Manitoba yet, but uh, I see that Delta is really starting to take hold, and they're saying it's going to it's going to move faster than the UK variant that came in, and this one is actually more vicious than the even the UK variant, which was already hard on the people. So this is serious stuff, and people need to really take it seriously. I know there's some Métis citizens that don't want to take it because they're listening to stuff in Facebook. They say it's a conspiracy. It's not real. I'm telling you it is real. I'm, I'm being very sincere, being honest, and we know people have died because of it. So, so I want people to understand that this thing is a very dangerous thing, and the only way we can save ourselves and help you save your family and save your relatives and your friends and those you love around you is by getting the vaccine. Even if you don't believe in it, get it to help others. You don't help mm-hmm. yourself. Right. You know, so just put it in your arm, and, and this way you'll help others. And you, if you don't care about your future, about yourself, then care about others. You know, take a, think about their lives. And, and, and then the effect of children, if we don't take care of our elders, we don't take care of our, our parents and all those around us, uh, so if they don't, if they're sick, how could they take care of their children? Mm-hmm. So I've, I just got a call today. I understand another Métis citizen just got uh, tested positive. Uh, he didn't get his vaccines yet, and uh, I was kind of, if I, got, if I would have got him on a phone, I would have got him, give him hell. You should have tried to get his vaccine, but get, but you can't give them our citizens hell, to be honest with you, because this damn premier made our life miserable as a Métis, not allowing us to get vaccines as the First Nations. And uh, so we're playing catch up right now, and we're doing a good job right now at the Federation. I'm very proud of that. But anybody that didn't get their vaccines, please get your vaccines. And if you need a ride, you need money, you need gas, you phone us, I will make sure you get that to get where you are, to get into a place. Uh, I was talking to an uh, individual in St. George. Uh, he's um, partially blind. He's Metis. And I told him, look, uh, you've got to get your vaccine. And he said, okay, I'll get it. I said, look, I'll, get, I'll, I'll have somebody drive you here and pick you up and take you to Winnipeg. And so he said, okay, let's organize it. So I'm hoping he's going to, he said, I don't go anywhere, so I'm okay. But what if somebody comes to you? You know, what if somebody drops off by accident your place and, and gives you it? And now you're all alone there, uh, partially blind. And now you got, uh, and you're in your late 50s uh, and you get the, the COVID. What if happens? Gonna, what's going to happen to you, I told him, you know, so. So I think he's 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 uh, taking heed to that, and mm-hmm. as I said, I'll have some EMF drive order to pick him up. And if anybody's having that situation where you don't know how to get there, where you need help, where you need, as I said, a ride, I don't care what it is, I don't care what it costs, the MMF will go get you, we'll put you and get your vaccines on the boat doses if necessary, we'll take care of you. So MMF has finally got our vaccines, we've got the Pfizer, and uh, but we'll take any vaccine we get our hands on uh, to save our people's lives. So again, I want to thank all, this, all, the, all the people, of course, my ministers, Anita Campbell and Francis Sharkman will lead this file. I also had... Um, a very good meeting uh, uh, with the Grand Chiefs, uh, SCO and MKO. We had a meeting with the uh, Minister of Family uh, Services, now the new Minister, so Ro- Rochelle Squires, and, uh, and uh, also with uh, Eileen, uh, which is the Minister of Indigenous Affairs. And uh, we, we talked about the Leadership Council, and people hear about the uh, child and family. Well, this is the first meeting we've had, the one before, it was never really a meeting with uh, with Heather Stephenson, but this one again is very clear. It's not even a meeting at all uh, in a sense. It was just to ask us what we think, and then we we challenged them and asked them, "What do you mean? What do you think? This is a legislated body that's supposed to be meeting, and you have not met since you truly became a government in this province. That's going on five, six years. So it's sad that you you know you ask us what we think now. Well, you show us if you really mean something. If you really are sincere, you show the, both the grand chiefs and myself that you're sincere." that you're going to respect the Leadership Council and its role on child and family services, then we'll have a good, very good discussion. So, again, uh, she's indicated she's going to prove to us that the, this government will finally take it seriously, and we'll see what happens. I've also had a good discussion with Ian Nairn uh, from, uh, and Bruce Moore from Hudson Bay Company. Uh, we're in dialogue regarding the Hudson Bay building on Portage Avenue. Mm-hmm. Uh, they indicated that they like the Federation to be uh, considering it as uh, taking over the building. Uh, we're looking at options right now, but it is a monster of a building. Wow. It's going to be a monster of an expense uh, if we take it on. Uh, so I'm looking at it very carefully and uh, because I can't put our Métis government, our Métis citizens in a, in a state where we take a building we can't afford. Mm-hmm. So Because it, it is a monster. We all know it. And yeah, it's yeah. only it's designed in such a way, like some people say, well, make apartments. Well, if you did make apartments, you'd have this massive centerpiece 
that you can't do nothing with because there's a big space. When you walk in there, right, you have that big central locations. And so the structural design is not made for apartments. You'd have to really spend a ton of money renovating maybe $150 million or more. So so we're looking at it, Ray, but we're having some very good dialogue with the president. Uh, I did indicate the Federation was looking at it for a while now. And, of course, there's a strong connection between Hudson Bay and the Métis, of course, mm-hmm. in our fur trade industry. Yeah. And so there's there, you never know what will happen. If, if there's a good business plan and some proper partners around us, uh, we could look at taking over that building. Well, you know uh, what, Dave, the, the building would be too big for my office, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's such a massive building, right? I know. And then parking is an issue because the parking lot is not owned by them. Oh. Uh, it's owned by a private uh, company. Right. Uh, so you'd have to look at, again, all these pieces. And then it's an historic building after now. And if it's a historic building, you can't do certain things to historic buildings. You can't just start breaking them down or changing them any way you want. Mm-hmm. There are all kind of rules that apply to it. So we're having good dialogue. They're, they're, they have other interested parties, but they definitely want to continue our dialogue with the Fumeti government to see if there's a way that the MMF would look at taking uh, uh, over the building. So we'll keep, on, we'll keep our people appraised on that and see where it takes us uh, uh, on that issue. Uh, also, we had the elections took place in Saskatchewan now. The Glenn McCallum uh, re, re got re-elected, and uh, Clement Charger, our national president, who ran there. Uh, and uh, he came second with 200 short. And uh, But there was hundreds of people apparently not allowed to vote in Saskatchewan. And they, it was kind of a uh, hardship for many. I got a lot of uh, calls from people and, uh, asking if, uh, as the vice president of MNC, if we can get involved. I said, I can't go and get involved in there because uh, they were very uh, uh, worried that so many people are t- being turned away to vote and not being allowed to vote. And so hundreds of people were disallowed. And, of course, that had an effect on the bottom line. But there's three new executives, and uh, apparently there's a hardship happening where the president's not going to meet this three new executive that's got elected. So mm. that's going to be an issue. I just read a letter yesterday. Uh, so, mm. But I guess the big issue is going to happen, and this is something that uh, I was very proud of our youth, and I'll speak on that shortly. Uh, but a uh, youth conference we had here just a week ago, but the uh, Glenn McCallum was supporting Ontario's new citizens that were coming in, and actually their population is bigger than his province already. So uh, I don't know what he's doing, what he's thinking about, why he's believing that he's going to allow those new Métis citizens to be uh, part of the Métis nation. And so I'm, I'm sure the three executives are totally against that, and there are so many, I think a few more definitely around his t- table. And he doesn't have a resolution that supports him to support Métis Nation of Ontario to bring all those new people into our, into our territory and potentially take away from the Métis Nation. And as I said, they'll overpopulate. Uh, the, if you let them in, you might as well, you're going to break the right to Quebec in the way through, right? There's no stopping it. Right. And so, again... Uh, and, and Ray, they're, they're going to outnumber us. There's 400,000 of us in right now of our nation that went through hell and back for the last 300 years. And then for these people to come out of nowhere, to steal our identity, uh, and then eventually outpopulate us, they probably be half a million and a million pretty soon to come. And uh, they would de- definitely start taking away from everything. We finally got something in our governments to help our people buy houses, build houses, fix houses. Yeah. Uh, we've got uh, money for our students now. we got uh, business money. we got all these things going on, on the good side for us. Finally, after so damn long of struggle and hardship, we can help so many families now and people. And now there's people coming from all over the East that want to come and steal it from us. And, yeah. and I still don't understand why the president of Alberta and the president of Saskatchewan Audrey Patra and, and McCallum are supporting this. I cannot. I know their people aren't because either they don't have a resolution from their cabinets nor they have a resolution from their assemblies. You know I what? have a resolution. I have a resolution from my cabinet. I have a resolution from my assembly uh, because I did my consultations with the people. So, yeah. But they don't. So it'll be interesting what happens. And as I said to the people, I'll never stop fighting to protect our nation. Well, I'll tell you what, David. I'll send them a copy of my song, Country to Kowalski. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's exactly <laughs> what they are. Yeah, send them that. <laughs> that's exactly what they are. But the youth conference last weekend was a success, a major hit. I want to thank Minister Janai on that. Uh, but... And the number one issue for the youth, again, was it's like our assembly, which uh, Zoom assembly wasn't really a, one of our big assemblies, but mm. most executives of our locals. But it was identity, again. There was very uh, high on the agenda for the youth. And we talked about the bursaries, annual financial support for students, about uh, sports and recreational programs, which are going to start taking place this year. We're going to, I said, we're buying camps right now. We're building, and we're going to continue to have such an big impact uh, throughout the aspect of, of all that uh, sections of the youth and 
and the students are so so proud now they can come to the federation and and they know they can count on the federation uh to be there to make sure they have resources to go to university and to colleges we also are continuing to recognize uh Minister uh, Dr. Trump. It was actually, she was the president of the university. She was first Métis president of the University of Winnipeg. And I just want to express my gratitude to the new president uh, and also to Sandy Riley. Uh, we're looking at, again, uh, honoring our, um, uh, Dr. Trump. Uh, as I said, the first Métis president, she moved to Alberta. And she worked uh, strongly with the Métis Federation and, and, and became a very good friend uh, with the Métis. And she was just starting to find herself. Uh, like I said, she didn't know her full history of herself. She knew they were Métis, but they never really uh, got involved. But when she now got involved, it actually had a big changing of her mindset and to really see the struggles of our people, uh, even now, looking at the struggles of us getting vaccine equality, was uh, uh, so sad to see that we were treated in such an hostile way by this government. And you'd think that would happen only in the 1800s, but it was happening now. So, But again, uh, I want to say uh, uh, to all our citizens out there, the Métis government is always going to have your back no matter where you are. So uh, again, to my mother-in-law, if you're listening, Janice, I hope you're listening. Happy birthday from me. And and I had a chance, our, ch- our time off to start here, Ray. Uh, I did lose my sister. Oh, sorry. Yeah, uh, we have such beautiful flowers that are sent to us by so many families and uh, businesses. And I wish I was away. I heard uh, a long, uh, what, uh, give me a second, where's my phone? Uh, you, you didn't say her name right. It's Lucy's mom, I believe. Uh, uh, she uh, uh, she just moved into a personal care home. Oh, yes. Yeah, and uh, so I just want to, again, say to her, you know, if you need anything, get a hold of uh, the Federation and uh, and uh, Alana, I think her, she said Alana. Do you remember, Ray? Uh, okay. What's your name? Uh, Lucy's mom. Lucy's mom. Do you remember? Yolande? Uh, Yolande. I think, I think that's it. I think you're right, Cowboy. So I hope she's listening, and uh, I know she's probably having a hard time, and uh, in a personal care room, people get very lonesome. And uh, so, in fact, we have such beautiful flowers here, and my wife and I were talking. I wish we could send them to a personal care room somewhere to, to certain elders, because my, my sister always took care of my mom, always. And uh, I actually have her headstone ahead of time, uh, beside, ready for my, which she to be buried beside my mom when she ever passed on. So she knows where she's going to lay beside my mom. So, and she always took care of elders. She was so respectful, and she actually had a childcare. She worked with uh, in the childcare field, and then she got Parkinson, and uh, and that took away her ability to to be uh, working in that field. And then, of course, it, uh, it, she fought it for 24 years, the Parkinson. And uh, so she's uh, gone to her new home. I've asked for your song, Ray. I asked Cowboy to play that as a gospel tune uh, for her. And uh, You'll know that it's me? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, anyways, uh, so uh, maybe we'll still get those flowers out. Uh, we're talking maybe to, to the nurses at the hospital. Cause there's so many, Ray. I got vases upon vases at my house sent by so many. Uh, that, uh, you okay, Dave? Oh. Dave, are you there? I'll talk to you guys oh. next week. Okay. You guys take care. Okay, Dave. Thank you. David Chartrand, the president of the Manitoba Maritime Federation.